right, well, it's my pleasure to welcome our Sunday keynote speakers to the stage right now. Before I do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Um, how many of you are familiar with the show Speechless? Yes, we have some fans. Fridays at 8.30 on ABC, Speechless, the sitcom. Uh, wonderful show because it depicts people with disabilities um, in a way that you don't often get to see them on TV. So it's a real pleasure to have Micah Fowler, who uh, is a star of the show here today, along with his sister Kelsey. Um, Micah started acting at age 15 in the uh, film Labor Day, directed by Jason Reitman. He was recently named uh, Forbes 30 Under 30 Class of 18, acknowledging the inspiring work of young entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and youthful visionaries. Um, and he's going to be welcome up here on the stage with his uh, sister Kelsey. They're going to be talking about their experience of uh, chasing their dreams and they're pursuing their acting careers. Um, one other thing I'll mention out there on your chairs, there are some uh, headshots of Micah. I know a lot of you probably like to speak with them and get an autograph, and we will be doing that at these tables on the, my left here after he finishes his remarks. So with that, please give a big, warm Family Cafe welcome to Micah and Kelsey. Father's Day to all the fathers out there, but especially ours right there. Happy Father's Day! <laughs> so like Micah said, I am his sister. My name is Kelsey, and I am also an actress, um, primarily in New York City. But I just want to just kind of start with a question. So how many of you have been completely shocked by things that people have either said or done um, in response to seeing that you have a disability? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? Uh, from pushing his wheelchair out of their way to speaking to him like he was a baby to uh, invading his personal space in the weirdest ways, we could write a book on the things that people have done and how they've responded inappropriately to Micah. Shortly after Micah's diagnosis at 14 months old, our family was quickly discovering society's perception of the word disabled. The definitions and insinuations that we came to realize were perceived were those of limitation. The thesaurus itself actually lists synonyms for disabled as wounded, weakened, confined, hurt, wrecked, broken down, helpless, incapable, and powerless. We were like, seriously? 
I was confused because the boy that I was living with and growing up with was anything but weak or wrecked or confined or powerless. In my eyes, he had superpowers. He never failed. That's right, yes, he did. <laughs> He never failed to make everyone around him smile. He, when we were at home, he was constantly making my family and I laugh, and we were always saying that he should be a comedian. And we, when I was with him, we got to park in the cool spots, and we never waited in the lines at Disney World. It was awesome. <laughs> he had so much passion and drive and determination. I didn't understand why the world saw him as anything less than I did. Oh. I got you. When I was gr 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 growing up, uh, 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 I th 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 felt like so. Society filled me as a fragile little kid to handle with care. Um, me, 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 many times I felt like I was spoken down to or, or, or ignored. Uh, like most of society did see any potential in me and feel my future as just existing. Uh, I know I had so much to offer and was so frustrated that society couldn't see that it was so hurtful. Uh, but, 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 but I knew that my mind didn't fail me from believing me and from believing that I could accomplish incredible things. And that was oh, oh, the, the motivation uh, I needed to, to dream beyond society limits for me. <laughs> my parents discovered the power and potential of their words. They realized that they had the opportunity and the obligation to speak life into our lives, both mine but especially Micah's. It was their responsibility to counter what society was telling us and stir curiosity, ignite hope, and encourage big dreaming. <laughs> Was. Yeah, it was impossible for 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 for
supposed to do? Uh, I was, uh, uh, I was certain to face. Boom. But they, they knew they, they could propel me to make it well. Be, 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 because of their past, be, because of their positive words and, and belief in me, uh, I learned to believe in myself. Uh, 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 I learned to, uh, uh, I learned to embrace uh, adversity and still be, be, be. Boom, boom, by the presence of it. Uh, 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 I learned that adversity makes me strong and leads to new opportunity. <laughs> Micah and myself are both actors, myself primarily in New York City and Micah in Los Angeles, which can be very hard because we're very far away. <laughs> but uh, you, because we're both actors, you would think that perhaps we come from a family in the entertainment industry or in the arts, that maybe our parents were somehow involved in either. However... Whoa. Whoa. Well, 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 the, the, that's n -n 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 not exactly the case. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 the, that is a <coughs> paramedic. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, and oh, mom is a real estate agent. But some boom, but some how we both called the acting bug. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So to give you a little background of how Micah and I got started in the industry, uh, it goes way back to when I began acting when I was seven years old after seeing a community theater production of Oliver. And I tried to jump up on the stage a bunch of times during the show. And so my parents thought it would be a great idea to get me involved in theater. And uh, Micah did a few shows there with me. We did The Wizard of Oz and 101 Dalmatians together. And I, my mom was brilliant, I would wheel him on in a little wagon that we had covered and decorated for each show. And it was great, but Micah wasn't exactly a fan of the stage. He was like, no, I don't, I don't really like this, after we did it, and so it was just me. And then I continued um, to do many different shows with that community theater, and after 10 shows with them, and after seeing my very first Broadway show, I decided and declared that I had big dreams for being on Broadway. My parents, thinking that it was just a phase, said, oh my goodness, that's wonderful, and we so support that. But you know that every, act, every waiter and waitress in New York also wants to be on Broadway, and it's not a very easy thing to do. But after begging and begging and begging for a year to audition in New York, my parents and I struck a deal, and they agreed with me that after one semester of maintaining my straight A's and taking acting, dancing, and singing lessons every day after school, that my mom would commit one summer to taking me to New York to audition. And if I booked something during that summer, they would support me all the way. And if not, we would move on, and I would forget about it, and maybe pursue it when I was 18 and could do so on my own accord. And I think that they expected the latter to happen. <laughs> However, that summer, I booked my very first uh, Broadway show. 
And I had, uh, in the midst of all that wonderful insanity, had the opportunity to perform on The View. And while I was on The View, um, and they were interviewing me, they did a pan of my family, who was sitting in the audience, and Micah, being the charming stud that he is, <laughs> simply just sort of didn't even realize that the camera was on him, and he did a little... <laughs> and just like won all of America's hearts right there. It was great. <laughs> And my agents called afterwards, because they were watching, and they called to congratulate me. And they were like, oh, Kelsey, you were so wonderful. We really loved it. Great job. But Micah, and they were like, honestly, we didn't even know that you had a brother, and he's so adorable. And we would love to submit him and represent him if he wants to be an actor. And so we asked him. We were like, hey, bud, do you want to give this a shot? Maybe do some television and film instead of theater, because he didn't seem to really like that. And he was like, yeah, sure. That sounds great. So after that, Micah did some background work on Sesame Street and Blue's Clues. And then uh, when he was about 15, he had an audition for uh, his first feature film. And he was in New York. He had to go to, I think he had a callback that was actually in New York. And when he came out of the callback, my mom, I wasn't there, but my, my parents say that he burst into tears and said to my mom, I don't know how Kelsey does this. This was the most stressful thing I've ever had to do in my life. And he was very upset and thought that he did a terrible job. Well, guess what? He booked it. <laughs> His very first big audition for a feature film, and he booked it. <laughs> And like we said before, that film was called Labor Day, and it starred Kate Winslet and Josh Brolin, and that was just incredible for us. I mean, we were so excited for him, and we were so grateful for that opportunity, but we didn't think much would come after it, honestly, because we didn't know that an actor with disabilities could sustain a career in the entertainment industry, just because we really hadn't seen it done before. But when he told us how much he loved it and how he wanted to do it for the rest of his life, what else could we do but encourage and foster that dream and fuel it with hope that he could be a trailblazer and break the molds in the entertainment industry set before him? And my tell me. Was so supportive of that dream. I got my first audition for Speed Dress in 2015. I. Uh, I read the pirate script. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, I was so ex uh, I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. Sounded just like the writers have been secretly recording my film and all the lies. I felt so grateful to find to finally be reading a script with someone like me in. Uh, and if then that was so well, the, the, the they asked me to sign in a personality. Tape. So after Micah read the script, they had asked him to send in a personality tape. And basically, a personality tape is just 
a tape where you're introducing yourself and talking a little bit about your hobbies and your interests. And they just basically wanted to see what Micah was like and what his personality was like. Uh, after we sent that tape, uh, I didn't hear anything back for a year. Uh, uh, and I was the, 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 Devastated. But I thought I didn't get the part. However, I assured him that despite his experience, actors don't book every audition that they go on. Well. <laughs> When the audition first came around the first time he was asked to send in a personality tape, the project was still untitled, and it was called The Untitled Scott Silveri Project. And Scott Silveri is Speechless's head executive producer and head writer. And the project was initially being pitched to Fox. However, after a year of not hearing anything, he got a request for another personality tape for this project that was now called Speechless and was being pitched to ABC. Uh, 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 I sent another tape, uh, uh, and then they sent me six scenes to put on tape and, uh, and send back to them. My parents and I voiced the voices of the other characters off screen while it was just Micah by himself on screen reacting like JJ does in the show. The agent called the next day to say that casting absolutely loved his tape and they wanted to send more scenes and see more of what he can do. So I had come home from a weekend at college and we filmed even more scenes and the agent said that the executive producer called and that they loved his audition, and that they would be in touch. Ah. Th 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 three months. One. I, and uh, I received a phone call. On my 18th birthday. Uh, uh, the, 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 I booked the world trade in speeches. Uh, it was so exciting. Uh, uh, it was the greatest birthday present uh, I ever got. <laughs> Micah leaves in two weeks to begin filming season three of Speechless. <laughs> Woo! Which now has a new night on ABC. ABC is setting up a new comedy block on Fridays, and so it will be on Fridays at 8.30, so keep note of that new time and new day. And he is just loving every single minute of it. And the best part, I think, is seeing how much hope and motivation and inspiration that the show and Micah are bringing to thousands. Thank you. <laughs>
Growing up, uh, uh, I had to I I had a choice. I chose to believe in my and my self. I chose to 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 not. That my disability can get in my way. Yeah. Uh, Chose to be persistent and waiting and to see trees out of my dream. Uh, uh, I ch chose to look at the physical, the physical child I taste from, from, from my cerebral palsy as simply a, a, a few extra obstacles uh, uh, to overcome as I trace my dream. If you take away nothing else from what we have said here today, we hope that you walk away remembering. That other people's perception of your potential be become. Your reality. Be believe in yourself. And to never give up on your dreams. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We are going to do a Q&A now. Yeah, we are going to do that. Um, you guys want to come up? We're going to invite Mike and Kelsey's business manager, <laughs> Tammy, up to the stage, <laughs> as well as her assistant business manager, David. Mom and we're going to do some Q&A. Can. can I get some red-coated people to be my assistants? Yeah, I can, because they have no choice. All right, just put your hands up and we'll find you. Oh, 
Okay, we're going to start right here in front. And we're going to get those mics all turned on now, I'm sure. Let's test. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. That was inspirational. And I wanted to ask the family if you could give me maybe three things that you think that um, um, service people or um, professionals that you interact with, three things we should do, three things or however many we should not do. And it can be just geared to the general public too. In other words, what really bothers you that people do and what's very, very encouraging. And I'm sure you have some things off the top of your head. So yeah. So <laughs> um, I know I've got, I've got one. One thing that drives even just me crazy, and I can't even imagine how crazy it might drive Micah, is when people make assumptions about his disability or his ability level. A lot of times people will just assume that if you're in a chair, it means that you can't walk at all or that you can't speak for some reason. Or there's a lot of different as weird assumptions that people will make. Um, and I think it's best to just get to know an individual first um, and then maybe ask questions. I know that Micah wouldn't mind answering questions as long as it's done from a sincere place and it's, if it's after you've gotten to know the person a little bit. Um, that's one for me. I think um, something on the opposite side of that that was a big help was that um, we fought very hard to mainline Micah in school. And that is an independent decision that every parent has to make um, based upon what you think your child's level is. We felt like Micah had a lot of potential. And my wife, if you've ever seen the show, Maya, on the show, played by Minnie Driver, has nothing on my wife. My wife is a <laughs> hurricane in motion. <laughs> Kids are loving that. The, the, the one thing that she did when we first got the diagnosis was is that she sat down and the internet is a fantastic place to learn everything about the law. She completely versed herself on the federal law and then we're from New Jersey, she completely versed herself on the state law as well so that when she went into the first IEP meeting, they did not know what hit them. Yeah. <laughs> she prepped like she was a lawyer going to court. They did. And then, and then when she whipped out and said, well, federal law says blah, 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 and nobody had ever said that. There were parents that don't go to IEP meetings. You need to go to your child's IEP meeting. You need to understand what, you, what resources you have available, and you need to fight for them. And you need to be willing to push back and go, well, you know, we'll just, we'll just go to court on that, I guess, and then watch what happens. <laughs> oh, they'll start to shake. Um, we fought very hard, and she fought very hard for things for Micah. And so we were always trying to get everything we could out of the system. And that's why this is such an amazing resource here. We're blown away by this conference. Um, as far as in the service industry and interacting with uh, people in our special needs community, um, I think Kelsey hit, hit a good point in that um, a lot of people, uh, different ages who have never interacted with people that are disabled are either afraid or they're intimidated um, and they've never been around someone who's disabled and so we, um, we should just encourage them to come ask questions but also um, it's, it's important not to generalize because each disability is different and even with each, within each disability there's different levels and um, different Severity. abilities, yeah. you know. Um, somebody might be in a wheelchair who can hear and talk and the next person might be in a wheelchair who can hear, you know, um, as well. And so it's important not to just assume and um, I think another thing though is shouting in someone's ear, um, moving their equipment without asking, uh, invading their personal space. Here's an example, Micah's leaving Costco. He's 20 years old, he's driving out on his wheelchair to Costco, and some lady goes, good boy. <laughs> you know, just silly stuff like that. That's what we're talking about in yeah. personal space. You can't do stuff that. like think before you do or act, and um, you know, it's important to treat them like you would anyone else and with the same level of respect. Yeah. <laughs> Over yeah. here on your left. No yeah. mic. What number is that? Three. That's mic three. Kelsey and Micah, this is Malcolm Harris Gowdy. I just um, 
first, well, I, well, there's a few things I want to say. Uh, you both have inspired me to continue to pursue my dream because my dream is to become a sportscaster. And second of all, I just want to ask um, to each of you, what do you think I need to do in order to continue, continue to pursue my dream of becoming that sportscaster? What would you guys say to that? I would say, I would say, to, to, uh, I, 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 To what a person says. Keep on going. Yeah. <laughs> In addition to that, I um, am a, I've learned two things recently. I've just recently graduated. And <laughs> thank you. Um, and with that, I think education is really important. I, um, because of the experience I had as a kid, didn't know if going to school for theater was right for me. Because in a sense, I sort of believed that I had had all this experience and uh, that was better. Not, well, I guess I did kind of think it was better than an education, the experience. Um, I am proud to now say that I was very sadly mistaken. <laughs> um, and my parents were able to sort of, you know, kind of in a weird way, they were probably the only parents in America pushing their child to go major in theater. Do it! <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say education is really important. And then I've recently learned, I think that if you do one thing every day to work towards that goal, whether it's going to a class or writing a letter to someone who inspires you that could possibly be a business connection or um, setting up a website or creating business cards or just do, I would say, do one small thing every day that pushes you towards that goal. Yeah. Um, and before you know it, you know, one year, 365 things later, you've come a long way. And I would also like to add to that that it's really important that um, you, in addition to your education, while you're getting that education in that field, that you network. And it's, um, whether it be just going to knocking on doors asking if you can intern, but networking and keeping business cards and keeping in touch, follow up. Thank you so much for your conversation. I appreciate your time. You know, can I come and sit in and watch for a day, for a week? Can I intern with your company? That's what's going to open up doors for you. Totally. Yeah, I'm going to add to that the same thing. In this business, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know, a lot of it. And the networking thing, get to know people, become an intern, go bang on a door. Um, if you're at a sporting event and you see a professional sportscaster, go, go talk to them. Learn everything you can from them and offer, hey, do you have an internship? Can I come and help? Can I come and shadow you for yeah, a day? Can I, can I just hang with you for yeah. a day? Don't worry about being a pest. It's your dream. Pursue it with a passion and you know, just keep knocking on those doors. Um, and you may have to put yourself out there for free in the beginning, but you know what? At some point, somebody's going to be like, hey, you know that kid, that guy, that whatever? Yeah. Yeah, let's, why don't we have him come on in or whatever? You know, it, it's the little tiny breaks that all of a sudden the door cracks open and then you can kick it down. Okay, we're going to go uh, over here on the right. Uh, hello, ladies and um, gentlemen. Uh, the first time I ever saw your show, Micah, it's just really hit home to me. And ever since, I have watched it continuously, and I will keep watching it as long uh, as the show is aired. Uh, we have a lot in common because I'm also disabled. I was diagnosed in 2010 with autism, 
and I wrote a book, Living Life with Autism, the world through my eyes, and this book is for you, my, um, uh, Micah, and what I do in my community in Miami, Florida, I go down to the uh, local uh, schools, organizations, uh, churches, temples, and I give speech on autism. My, my, my last chapter in my book is autism is not a death sentence, it's just a roadblock. I look at us as you and I are gifted. We are not disabled. And this is my passion. I go and give encouragement to the kids that anything is achievable. My book leads to self in, in enhancement and achievable things in life to inspire and to do great things. And I give encouragements to the parents with the kids who are disabled going into the high schools, get them into a, a, a voc rehab habilitation. They train you to do, to do, to do jobs and, and so forth, in, interviews and learn how to uh, do resumes, job applications, and it's a wonderful thing. And uh, this is what I do voluntarily. I'm also, my question to you is, Micah, I'm also looking into getting to do acting because I love working with people and interacting and this is something that I've always wanted to do. So how can I achieve my dreams and goal of also being an actor and I'm willing to do it uh, uh, freelance without getting paid just so I can get the experience and be interacting, especially with those that are my, myself uh, disabled, because I can see on the both sides of the spectrum, getting bullied in the classroom, not being able to get a seat on the bus, and getting looked upon, frowned upon, because we're different. But the fact is, I always knew that I wasn't different. And you always knew, too, that you weren't different, and you were special, and right. you and I are achievers, and together we can all conquer the world! <laughs> Thank you so much for the work that you do as well. And if we all pitch in a little to uh, encourage others, we can change the perception of society towards um, the special needs community. And I would just say, as far as you pursuing an acting career, it's really the same thing. Just pursue it with a passion. Um, you can set, you can send, what's that? Yeah, there's local groups that you can get involved with, um, such as community theater groups to get started. Also, you can send out headshots and resumes to agents um, and try to get an interview. And um, networking is a big is a big part as well. Yeah. Take classes. Um, there's also a lot of opportunity in student films. So if yeah. you find a university near you with a film program, um, you can reach out to to that program and say, hey, you know, I'm interested in directing or being behind the camera or even just watching you guys put together a student film for a week or whatever. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity to learn a whole lot there. Yeah. Yeah. Next. Okay, Jesse, we're going to go over here on your left. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm from China and I need my interpreter. Uh, Hello everyone, I come from China. I'm very glad to be here and I'm very fortunate for the first time I'm here, I see the big stars. <laughs> 我们在一些繁育网站上也可以看得到，啊，是非常，也是挺有名的一部家庭剧，然后也是我第一次看到有残障人士为主角的电视剧。Your show is actually popular online, and I was able to watch that back in my own country. And I'm very surprised and happy to see the people with a disability, disability can be the stars on those show. I was very happy, and now I can see you. Uh, uh, 
，是不是跟你自己的故事有相关连接 ？So your story really inspired a lot of students in my country who who has、um, cerebral palsy,、uh, and also what I was wondering is that if the characters and the experience you portrayed in your show. Or your based on your personal experience. <laughs> Good question. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Yes.、Um, yeah. Well, when we've read the pilot script,、um, we were actually quite shocked. I literally looked around for cameras in my house. I'm like, where are the red blinking lights?、Oh, we literally they thought、know. they've been like secretly filming the Fowlers over here. But.、Um, Since then, since Micah joined the show, yes, we have had input,、um, um, and the, the creators of the show are an amazing group of people、yeah. who are very collaborative, and they've reached out to the Cerebral Palsy Foundation for input, and they're consultants on the show as well. And、um, my husband and I have given them ideas from our personal lives. People move in Micah's wheelchair. I made a Micah manual for my parents that watched Micah <laughs> and. Uh, Cedric on the show, as Mike as as JJ's aide says, this kid comes with instructions,、um, and just things like that. There are a lot also, of experiences and ideas that we've given. Mike、uh, was on a sled hockey team in New、oh, Jersey,、yes. and when the writers found that out, they were like, "That's the coolest thing ever. We have to use that."、Yeah. And when、mm, the instance my mom was kind of talking about, especially in the pilot episode, was when、uh, Mike was when JJ had to use the garbage ramp to get into school. And there was an instance that、um, when Micah was just starting middle school, where she had to drop him off later than、um, the bus couldn't come and pick him up in the morning. Something was happening, and she had to drop him off a little later in the day. And she went to the main entrance, and there was no ramp. And she tell the tell the story. There was a step, and as I'm trying to get the wheelchair up the step, it almost tipped, and I caught it. And I got in, and I was all frazzled and frustrated. And I looked at the girl sitting at the table, and I said, "Who do I need to talk to to get this taken care of? This is completely inaccessible and unacceptable." And she's like, and right behind me was a guy in a suit who was、um, superintendent, was right? Superintendent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's like, "That's okay." Right What is this? What is that?、Um, you know. And we, we went on break that week for Thanksgiving break. Came back, and there was a there was a cement ramp there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> you know,、um, after you know, so they were really very accommodating. But one of the really important things I want to say is that、um, Scott Silveri, who is a writer of our show,、um, he grew up with an older brother with cerebral palsy,、uh, more severe than Micah and JJ, the role Micah plays in the show. And he's very well known in the industry. He was a writer and one of the producers of Friends. And he had this dream of his from a, for, from a very young age that he wanted to someday do a comedy, showing people、um, about a life. In a family with a special needs individual, and the funny things that happen to us, whether it be equipment breaking or vans breaking, or you know, and he he wanted to do a comedy, and also、uh, it's always it was always a dream of his, and so this show is that dream coming to fruition, and、um, so a lot of ideas also come from you know、uh, takeoffs on his personal experiences growing up as well, and Mason Cook plays the younger brother of JJ and.、Uh, He actually plays Scott Saveri、um, in many ways. This is very much inspired by Scott's、right. life and not based on it, but、right. it's it's, a, it's cool that it comes from someone who has that personal experience. And we do have、um, several writers on the show who have family members in their lives who who are special needs, and we, including I don't know, you guys have heard of Zach Anner. He's a comedian. Also, Zach Anner is a comedian with cerebral palsy who's a writer、He's、on our show. He's one of our writers, and we've got a secretary who's in a wheelchair. So there's、uh, we've got actors and actresses as well、um, who come as guest starring on the show that are、um, in some different ways have special needs. Yeah. We're gonna go down here in the front to this young man on your right. So me and my mom watch the show every single Wednesday. <laughs> we would watch it every. Yes. We, We watched it every single Wednesday. Every time a new episode would come out, and my sister has autism, so it's highly relatable. A lot of the things that are in your show, and I'm kind of wondering, do you use the stuff that's in the show outside of the show, like when you're not acting? Question. Ah,、uh, what ah、uh, ah.、Uh. I I actually you 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 
is to use my electric wheelchair to 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 question on so Mikey used to use almost the exact electric wheelchair like he said that JJ uses on the show to go to school but he graduated a year ago um, and yeah. Yay. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't really use the electric wheelchair anymore he prefers first the manual yeah and um, kind of like so a point that my mom sort of hit a little bit was that JJ and Micah have different severities of cerebral palsy so JJ uses a communication board to communicate, whereas Micah does not. And JJ also has a little more specificity than Micah has in real life. So sometimes if you'll see him push his chair, he kind of does it with um, some specificity in his hands. And JJ also doesn't walk, right? And, no. and Micah does. Micah can walk with a walker, um, and he uses the walker primarily in our house. He doesn't use his chair. He just kind of uses the chair when we go for long distances outside, yeah. We, we understand, and it's a question we hear a lot um, about the communication devices, because a lot of people, and there are probably people here that use iPads, they're able to touch, the, touch and bring up information. Some people even have pointers that they can point at, and, and like Micah yeah. does, eye gaze. Um, it's a very valid question, but like everybody in here is individual in, in what their disability is, it's a very individual choice. We met the person, that Scott Silveri, the executive producer of the show, based that character on in part. And she is a uh, woman in her 20s who uses an assistant, kind of like Micah, uh, JJ uses Kenneth on the show, to communicate. It's a personal choice. She could use a machine if she wanted to, but she enjoys the human interaction of sort of having a voice who's real. And it's amazing to watch because after a while they have become so intuitive with each other that he can actually almost give the sentence out before she's finished it on the board. And sometimes if he gets ahead of her, she stops him and they start over again. But there are still people out there who use that exact system. They have an aid and they use the device. Micah doesn't, he's able to talk. He gets a little nervous sometimes up here and it kind of slows him down a touch. When, at, when he's at home, trust me, all he does is talk. <laughs> talk, 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 talk. He does a lot so. of jokes, too. <laughs> Next. Over here, on the left. Hi, Fowler family. My name is um, Christine Gardner. I had the pleasure of meeting you guys last night. First off, I want to say you guys are absolutely amazing. Oh, my gosh. I love <laughs> each and every one of you. Um, and I want to thank you guys for bringing on the show and bringing so much inspiration and love and acceptance for people with disabilities. It's just amazing. I often cry every time I watch the show because I feel like you guys are representing everybody who's disabled and you're representing real life situations and I think that's so important um, to represent what actually happens, you know. And um, I just want to thank you guys, and I want to thank my sister especially for the love that she shows her brother. I think that's a huge, huge deal. Thank you. Um, for the acceptance of the love. And I just want to thank you guys so much. Um, my question is for Micah. Is it hard for you on set? Do you get fatigued? Is it hard to work those hours? Um, because I get fatigued really, really fast, and I know it's hard for me, so I was wondering, 
how that works on set um, for you guys and how the on set life is with your crew family. with other characters and chemistry reads and you meet the producers and the directors and Micah did none of that. He never met a single person involved with production or casting before they offered him the role. Which is amazing for any actor. But then an actor with um, a disability, it's, you would think that they would want to meet that person and see what they're like and what their ability is like and maybe figure that out. Um, But they hadn't, and we weren't sure. We were, my mom kept asking me, she'd be like, I don't know, do you think he can do this? We, we, um. I was worried about the hours, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, my husband and I looked at each other and like, oh geez, what did we get ourselves into? We're not, we're not sure he can do this, and we were nervous. But, um, but he, honestly, I'm on set with him all the time, and he is in, having the time of his life. And I think that every day's a new adventure, and so he's got this new adrenaline every day. What, what are we gonna do today? Like, you know, and he's having the time of his life, so. I think uh, he doesn't seem to get tired. The one time was the pilot when we shot the overnight shoot. He got tired. (laughs) It was like 3 in the morning, and and, uh, Scott's a very like, yeah, why don't you two go to the trailer and take a nap while we film the background for a while? And so we took like a two-hour nap, and and then he was all, he was good to go and finished out at like 6 in the morning. But that that was about the only time that I can think of. They do incredibly long days on set. There are times where my mom and Micah, so my, my dad and I, I live in New York, my dad lives at our home in New Jersey, and half of the year Micah and my mom fly out to Los Angeles, and then they come home and, and we're home together um, for the other half of the year. But they do incredibly long days out there. Sometimes they're on set for 14, 15 hours. But it's, um, you know, it's not like he's, he's literally on every moment of that. There'll be days where he'll, Micah will be in scenes two and three, and then he'll have two scenes off where he'll go to the trailer and watch Netflix because he's not doing tutoring anymore. He's graduated. Um, And then he'll have another two or three scenes and then he has another break, you know, where he'll go play cards or do something, you know, play video games with one of the crew members or something. I don't know. So, like, there's, yeah, so he gets breaks in between as well to hang out and um, have fun. (laughs) And I can say this because I get to visit set a lot. The crew absolutely loves Micah. (laughs) He'll be modest about it, but... Um, he just, I don't know, like I said, I, I believe that he brings so much joy and so much happiness everywhere he goes, and I think everyone else gets to see that too. We set. have a great crew on set. I mean, they are all so incredible, yeah. and um, everybody, they've been very accommodating to us um, as far as what Micah's needs are with this trailer and a ramp, and um, yeah, it, it's been an amazing work environment for us. Okay, we're going to do a couple more um, right here. In the front. Go Hi. ahead. Hi. 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 I'm Faith. Um, I'm a huge fan of Spaceless with me, and mom, and dad. You are fantastic. I was an actor too, and you are fantastic. Aww. I imagine dance yesterday. You are great at beauty and abilities on you, so that's a great idea for you. Thank you. Because I love you so much. We love you. It's for you. So I'm speechless. Aww, thank, thank you. you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Aww. So at what point, my, Micah, in your acting career, did you start believing that your acting career was going to work and go towards something really big, like speechless? Uh. Yeah, oh, 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 oh
actually when I did the Labor Day. Jason. Jason White Man. Came up to do on 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 to my mama and the the then and that and said to do them this movie goes yeah 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 some more things. I, I, when, <clears throat> excuse me, when Micah Witten did Labor Day, he went out to Massachusetts and they filmed it out there. And I remember Tammy came home and she said, you know, we, wrap, we wrapped up late one night and then Jason Reitman, who was the writer of the movie and also the director of the movie, um, had come up to him and said, come up to Tammy and he said, listen, if this thing, if this thing comes together the way we hope it does, he will see work. And we were both very excited about that, but I kind of thought like, yeah, but there aren't any parts out there. Like, this is one of the few things we've ever seen that represents the special needs community or the disabled community. And so, when Speechless came along, and we didn't know anything about it for the first year, Micah's story of testing in January of 2015, we didn't hear a thing. That's not uncommon. It happens all the time. The way you find out you didn't get the role is you watch the show on TV and yep. somebody else is doing it. <laughs> um, you're like, well, I guess I didn't get that. Yeah. So, you know, we had a lot of experience with Kelsey, and so we just forgot about it. And Micah was like, okay, you know, this is how it goes. You don't hear anything. And then almost to the, like, almost to the day, a year later, they said, by the way, that thing is still out there, and we want to hear, you, hear from you again. And then, so that was, we were like, wow, another role, like, this is incredible. And, and so we did it again, and we really put our heart and soul into it, helped him out, the tests went out, they came back right away, and they said, we love him, we love him. The only reason we might not cast him is because they were thinking about going in a different direction with some things. And so we, we, we just hung in there, and we, every couple weeks, they'd keep, they, they would call back and go, hang in there. We're not done yet. <laughs> Hang in there. We're, we're still, we still love him. So when he booked it, we were, we were utterly thrilled because how many roles do you see on TV that are special needs or disabled? I mean, there aren't any. Maybe Glee? And then we found out yeah. that guy really wasn't in a wheelchair. But um, we are hoping that this show will help show that we need more roles that represent the population as it really exists. <laughs> and that there are disabled and special needs actors who can do those roles. Yes. And you don't need to find an able-bodied person to play a disabled person on TV. Yeah. And I also want to add that I, I feel like the, the industry, the casting directors, um, have been definitely taken a huge step in this direction. They held a huge nationwide casting call. Um, all the casting directors, part of the union, held a huge nationwide casting call for special needs individuals back in January. Um, and I think they're going to make that a yearly or bi-yearly thing. So um, that's a huge step right there. Also, I'd like to say that from the very beginning, there was no question in Scott's mind or the people, the executives yeah. at ABC, that they wanted to cast somebody in this role who had cerebral palsy. I mean, that was a, no, for them, that was not a question. Which so really cool. that's really awesome. Yeah. yeah.
Okay, um, I just want to remind you all, we have a couple tables set over here on the left, my left, your right, so Micah and his family will be available for a little bit um, to sign autographs, chat, what have you. Um, so let's give them a big set up, a big round of applause. Thank you so much for being here. for having us. This is an incredible event and gosh, Thank Laura, you. you're amazing for, for yes. creating this. This is really incredible. I said to her last night, this has to go nationwide. Yes. Every state needs to have this. Woo. This is such an incredible resource. You families are really blessed. Thank you. Thank you.